Welcome to a new mini-series on night sky navigation. This episode discusses the basics of moon and star navigation for the northern hemisphere. However, the same principles apply for the southern hemisphere. In the video, I take a number of time-lapse um, uh, pictures, uh, or sometimes they're called night-lapse pictures, and I use a GoPro Hero 4 camera to do this. Uh, the settings for the camera are listed in the narrative below the video. Scientists have long known that birds and many other animals navigate like sailors once did using the sun, moon, and stars for direction. Birds also have an internal compass that senses the Earth's magnetic field. When we were filming this video, we heard mallard ducks and other migrating birds all night long. Much can be learned by observing wildlife. Future episodes will discuss wildlife migration and its application to bushcraft. I want to start out with the basic principles of moon-based navigation. The moon is bright at night because it reflects light from the sun. Like the sun, the moon rises in the general east direction and sets in the general west direction. But its orbit is different, with a 28-day cycle. This results in various phases, from new moon, which doesn't reflect any light, to crescent moon, to full moon, which is fully illuminated. Details will be described in later episodes. But for now, let's talk about the crescent moon. It's easy to use the crescent shape of the moon to find a general north to south line in the sky. Imagine a line slicing the crescent moon from the uppermost point, or horn, to the lower horn. Imagine extending this line to give a general direction of south. This method works best when the moon is high in the horizon. It is less accurate when the moon is low on the horizon. In the southern hemisphere, use the same method to find the general direction of north. And so it's just reversed. And find, instead of finding south, you're finding north. Lots of people love the idea of finding direction and navigating using the stars. But they fear that it is complicated. But it doesn't have to be. In fact, you can find direction using the stars just as quickly as you can using a compass. And it can be a lot of fun. One of the easiest methods is to find a star that doesn't move. And in the northern hemisphere, we are fortunate to have such a star. It is called Polaris. In this time-lapse video, you can see the Big Dipper rotate around Polaris. If you're looking at the sky in real time, however, you don't see the rotation. So I want to show you a single image from the night lapse video. The Big Dipper is upside down in this example, but locating uh, the Big Dipper is the easiest way to find Polaris and therefore find north. Follow the handle of the Big Dipper to the last two pointer stars of the bowl. From this point, draw an imaginary line approximately five times the distance between the pointers. The star at the end is Polaris, which is always positioned over the North Pole. The constellation Cassiopeia is also very helpful in finding Polaris. It's located on the opposite side of Polaris from the Big Dipper, and so when uh, the Big Dipper is low on the horizon or is obscured, Cassiopeia is, is often very easy to view. The number of degrees that Polaris is above the horizon is equal to your latitude. For an approximate measure of latitude, you can hold your fist out in front of you, and we're all different shapes and sizes, but we're proportionate, and an outstretched fist uh, makes approximately 10 degrees for most people. And so each fist is 10 degrees of latitude. And in this case, when I measured it, Polaris was three fists 
above the horizon. And so that's equal to 30 degrees. So I took out my smartphone and looked up the actual latitude. And where I was was 30.7 degrees north. And so this is amazing. This method actually works. And so in less than a minute, you can find north and you can estimate your latitude. And you can do this just with your bare hands. In the southern hemisphere, a different method is used to identify the South Pole. The Southern Cross is used. Now, I hope to be able to show you how this is done because next month I'll be traveling to Australia and if everything works as planned, I'll take some videos, some night lapses, and you'll see the Southern Cross on another YouTube. Wish me luck. Another important constellation is Orion. It's named Orion after a hunter in Greek mythology. This time-lapse video shows how it rises in the east and sets in the west, similar to the sun. Do you see the three bright stars that are close together in a straight line? This is Orion's belt. Let's look at a close-up image. Orion's belt provides an accurate estimate of east and west. The first star in the belt to rise and set is called Mintaka. It always will rise and set within one degree of true east and west, wherever you are in the world. I hope you've enjoyed this short introduction to night sky navigation. Let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see for future episodes. Bob and I spent the weekend at Inks Lake State Park uh, filming the, the clips that, are, that you've, you've seen so far. We uh, enjoyed, of course, looking at the night sky, hiking the trails, and seeing lots of wildlife. I made a short video about this, and it has a little music to go with it, of course. Take a look at it. Until next time, peace. Thank you.